Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to our latest summer edition of the Milford Informer. I am your host, Tim Coet. Again, we have taken the show outside to enjoy what has been just some gorgeous summer weather here in the Milford area. For much of the month of July so far, we have certainly been lucky to have some terrific summer weather to enjoy here locally. We have a bit of an abbreviated version of the Informer again for you this week, because again, a lot of people are outside enjoying this weather. Not as many activities going on, not as many events going on in the town, but we still have a lot that we want to get to this evening. A couple of town events that we do want to recap for you, and we also have a lot of Milford Legion baseball to get you updated on as well. So let's get right to it as we bring you tonight's top stories rundown. Tonight, we'll give you an update on the status of Mike Morrison as he continues to prepare for the Pan Mass Challenge, and we'll also let you know how you can help contribute to Mike's fundraising goal. Also tonight, we'll take a look back on the second annual Milford 4th of July Parade with commentary courtesy of Scott Crisofulli and Michelle Zale. And later in sports, we will have highlights from the final weekend of the regular season for Milford Legion Baseball, and we'll also look ahead toward the 2019 Zone 4 playoffs. For the last several months, we've kept you updated on the status of Milford resident Mike Morrison as he continues to raise funds for his ride in the upcoming 2019 Pan Mass Challenge. That ride is now just a few weeks away, and Mike is looking for a final push in his fundraising goal as he gets set for what is a long and beautiful ride all the way out to Cape Cod. So let's hear from Mike Morrison now as he brings you one final update on his ride towards the Pan Mass Challenge. Hi, Mike Morrison again. I'm back in my colorful jersey, so that means back here to talk about the Pan Mass Challenge. Uh, I've spoken about it here on Milford TV a few times already. Just to recap, uh, it's midsummer, uh, mid July right about now, and the ride is coming up in a few weeks. That's August 3rd and 4th. So it's uh, hoping to get a lot of fundraising in before the ride, although the fundraising technically closes end of September. Um, the sooner the better, so every rider raised dollar can uh, go towards cancer research at Dana Farber. Sooner the better. I plan to set out from Milford on Friday, uh, August 2nd, riding from here to Wellesley to, to the start line at Babson University. Uh, then, so from there, Wellesley to Bourne, which is approximately 80 to uh, no 90 miles, I believe, overnight in Bourne, and then from Bourne to Provincetown, that's another 80-ish miles. So just under 200 miles total when you count riding to and from the start line. Uh, my expectation is it'll probably be about six, six and a half hours doing that. Um, I'm with Team Waters here in Milford, Team Wa of Waters Corp here in Milford, and we did a team visit to Dana-Farber uh, not too long ago. Yeah, I rode from here over to Dana-Farber in Boston approximately 30 miles, just under two hours, 15 minutes, so extrapolating from there, it's roughly six, six and a half hours, so I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, as you can probably tell by my appearance, I'm riding all over town, riding here today, so for me, riding isn't the issue, it's more so much the uh, fundraising. My, my goal this year is five grand, that's pretty much the minimum for the marquee rides, meaning the ones that end in Provincetown. You can't really beat the Cape in summer without the traffic, so uh, hopefully uh, I'm at three grand right now and hopefully I can meet that before the start of the ride. Uh, but as I said earlier, the end of fundraising is really towards the end of September, it's when things have to begin by then. It means a lot to me to benefit, to use the skills I've developed here riding around town for fun and transportation to something more than just getting from point A to B. Uh, that's fun, but it's also good to feel I'm participating in something bigger than myself. Um, I don't have much personal experience of cancer in my family, but I know several of my friends have, and uh, they've benefited from the research uh, that's been done at Dana-Farber and institutions elsewhere. So. Uh, just the feeling that I can give back in some way is really be personally beneficial to me. Um, so, and it, it is a fun experience, uh, no doubt. That's uh, a big reason why a lot of the 6,000 plus, I think 6,300 last year, probably verging 6,500 plus this year, do it. It's a, it's a real, you might even say a cycling mecca, even though I would never call Massachusetts a cycling mecca, not yet. 
but it is a really gathering point for cyclists across the state, New England, even the world, to gather and uh, just celebrate the act of charity through cycling. Uh, it's a shared joy we all have, um, and uh, being able to contribute something more than just the pleasure of moving down the road under your own power is really fulfilling. If you'd like to donate to my ride, there's um, the main URL is donate.pmc.org uh, slash MM0795, that's 0795, that's my rider ID. Uh, so that way you can donate to my account and uh, it'll be every dollar goes to the PMC, which is funneled through the Jimmy Fund. Um, but it'll be registered that way to my fundraising account, so it'll help me meet, reach my goal. You can also donate to the PMC directly through their website, but donating to my your, my writer account or any others, um, there are several writers from Milford also doing this, is beneficial to help them meet their goal. Also, for our uh, corporate denizens, if you uh, work in a large corporation and you want to uh, maximize your donation to the PMC, uh, see if uh, there is a corporate donation matching system at your company. Uh, a lot of the large employers in town, Waters Corp, Dell EMC, and others I'm sure, uh, have a system whereby you can donate to a rider and they will match 100% up to a certain dollar amount, that amount varying by or per company or whatever rules are in, in effect. But that's really the best way to donate to my ride or any other rider's account is uh, go through that system. So whatever you put in, let's say you put in 50, it'll become $100 and I'll get the riders such as myself to their goal much faster. Thanks so much for watching. I'm looking forward to this ride this year. Uh, be hopefully good weather this year. Last year wasn't so much, but hopefully this year will be wonderful summer weather. Looking forward to getting out there and uh, thank you very much in advance for any, any money you choose to donate. Uh, very much appreciated. A few weeks ago, Milford residents had a chance to gather around Main Street and enjoy the second annual Town 4th of July Parade. Ray Osier was the driving force once again behind this year's parade, which was bigger and better than last year's event and looks to continue to gain momentum as it becomes a new summer staple in the community. Is Jim Heron leading off the police department? Yeah, Jim Heron is in the first car. We got the... Uh the bikes, the Milford Police bikes. Mr. Sank. All right, now we have the banner right. for the 4th of July parade starting us off. Wow, that's a lot of kids. Yeah, it is. It's great. Hey. That would be cool as a kid riding your bike through the parade. I would crash into everybody. That would be so awesome. Oh, well, these bikes are very fantastic. Nice. Look at that. They all get helmets on. Very good. Uh, most of them. <laughs> oh, here comes our chief, Chief O'Loughlin. Uh, the 40th of the year. The 40th of the Laughlin. year. That is unbelievable. On stilts. I don't know how they do that. That's crazy. It's I don't you. know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like Paul Revere <laughs> in the Statue of Liberty. I think. Well, it definitely got Lady Liberty anyway. So we got a Milford oh, Highway plow truck. I see a truck. Milford green truck coming up. Scott, would you like to tell us this about is, your vehicle? This is our latest addition to our fleet. It is a converted military truck that we acquired from the military. It's pretty amazing. Um, is there a reason for the plow? It's summer. Well, it's You're only a plow summer. truck, so the plow yeah. will stay on it. Okay. And that is one of our employees, Jimmy Chazinski, driving it. Excellent. Jimmy! Hey, Jimmy! Special Olympics. Excellent. Wow, look That's at that float. Nice. That is a great float. That's a beautiful float. float. Oh, and there's Jen. Yeah, Jen Walsh. I think we might have to snag her real quick. Yeah. Hold on one second. Tell us about your, what it is that you do. 
Um, so we run the local Special Olympics program where we have over 300 athletes and about 100 volunteers and a lot of coaches, a lot of coaches. Yeah, that's yeah. so great. Yeah. Uh, do you usually have an event, a big event? Or? Do we usually have like an event, like once a year? Oh, we have events all year long, okay. all year long. We have sports all year long, three or four um, sports teams a season. So we're constantly running events. Excellent. Wow. That's excellent. That's so great. That's excellent great. flow. You guys did some Thank work you on for that. Us. Huh? Yeah, thanks for being My here. My athletes are enjoying this parade. I'm sure. That's so great. Yeah, back to the future here. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that thing oh. disappear and come back. That would be That'd cool. Be cool. We got the DeLorean. Look at that, huh? That is fabulous. It's one of my favorite but movies. He's holding his key. Is he, oh, we know he's holding his remote for it. That's the remote. Yes, I knew that. That is excellent. <laughs> that is neat. <laughs> Great. But I, I thought I about it, but you know, what do you play? I you mean, play this. Patriotic music? Yeah, absolutely. There's only so much you can play. Yeah, but there's only so long you're playing for. That is cool. I got to do that. I think so. Does that great? Maybe Christmas parade. Christmas can be a little cold for the instruments, I'm thinking. That is really neat. Oh, double decker bus. Wilfred Auto Sales and Novel That's Equipment neat. Corps. Wow. That is cool. That is really neat, yeah. Uh, looks like the party bus. <laughs> it took a wrong turn from England. Here they are. Yeah. It's okay. I guess that's it. Well, I hope everybody has a happy and safe 4th of July. The regular season has now come and gone and it is time for the 2019 Zone 4 playoffs to begin for Milford Legion Baseball. Before we get you set with everything you need to know for the upcoming Zone playoffs, let's take a look back at some of the final games for the regular season for Milford, starting with a very tough matchup against another playoff bound opponent in Lemonster Post 151. As Milford entered the final days of the regular season, they put themselves in good position to contend for the Zone 4 regular season title. But in order to make it to the top, they would need to get past the team currently occupying first place in the standings, Lemonster Post 151. With two high caliber teams taking the field, we expected a close, low scoring game, but the Milford offense had different ideas as they came to the plate in the first inning against Lemonster starter Sage Bray. An opportunity for Danny Johnson, who has really maximized his run-producing opportunities all season long. He remains in a tie with Sam Parker for the team lead and runs batted in with 22. He's going to get another one here as he drives one out into center field for a base hit. It's boxed around out there by Dylan Souza, and now S Steven Simos will have a chance to advance to third. Down to second goes Johnson as Milford will strike first in this game. They take a one-to-nothing lead. Or excuse me, Sam Parker, and here he swings away, sends it off the pitcher. It's going to travel deep out towards the second baseman who has no play. The pitcher out there is well trying to field it. Everyone is safe, and a run will score to put Milford on top two to nothing. Delivers an 0-1 pitch, and it's a tapper right out in front of the plate, fielded by the catcher. He can't come up with it cleanly and just has to hold on to it. Looks to be a little bit shaken up on top of it as a run comes in to score. Final scores for Lemonster on the season. We'll do that more in just a minute as this ball is back up the middle off the bat of Chris Brunt. It was just past the dive of the shortstop. It rolls out into center field. Two more runs come home. So a two-run single for Chris Brunt as now this ball is a liner to shortstop that's dropped by Hallowell. Let's it roll behind him and everyone will be safe. And right now the wheels are falling off for Lemonster in this first inning. Runner takes off for second base as this ball is pounded out to right field. It's well over Garcia's head and will roll all the way to the old press box out in right center field. Two runs will score as Parker continues around the bases. They will hold him up at third with a two-run triple. And he puts the exclamation point on a powerful first inning for this Milford offense. They now jump on top nine to nothing. 
It was the most explosive inning of the season for Milford as they sent 13 batters to the plate and pounded out nine runs on six hits to take command against one of their biggest zone rivals. Brendan Kelly, meanwhile, would quiet the post-151 bats through the early innings. He'd strike out back-to-back -back hitters to shut things down in the second and would pick up a third K in the fourth before surrendering a single run on a base hit from Lemonster second baseman Matt Dupuy. Milford's offense would go dormant after that first inning eruption. They would eventually plate a tenth run as Matt Shaver legged out an RBI infield single in the fourth inning. Post-59 would then have a chance to deliver a final knockout blow with the bases loaded in the fifth, but reliever Danny Garcia would strike out Brendan Kelly, keeping the game going past the fifth. We'd end up seeing a full seven innings played in this one, and thanks to some contributions off the bench for Lemonster, they would score three late runs. It would not be close to enough for Lemonster, however. Milford would go on to win by a final of 10 to five, putting themselves dead even with Lemonster in the standings heading into the final weekend of the regular season. The final weekend of the season would begin with another home game for Post 59, as they welcomed in a Northborough team hovering around the 500 mark and looking to gain some late season momentum. As the game got underway, fans would quickly realize they were in for an absolute pitching clinic. On the mound for Post 59 was the crafty lefty Alex Gunfriday, and he would be surgical through the early innings. He'd quickly dispatch the side in order in the first on three quick balls put in play. After retiring the first two hitters in the second, Gunfriday would tally his first strikeout, getting Nate Anderson swinging to end the inning. With two outs in the third, Gunfriday would induce a routine flyout to center off the bat of Sam Forbush to complete his third straight 1-2-3 frame. Gunfriday would retire the first 10 batters he faced before a one-out single from Jeff Lamoth would finally break up the string. Gunfriday would quickly recover, retiring the next two hitters, including his third strikeout of the night. Meanwhile, Northborough starting pitcher Dylan Connors would hold up his end of the pitcher's duel as well. After a 1-2-3 first, Connors would yield a one-out base runner in the second inning on a walk. That base runner would not last long as Connors' first pitch into Matt Shaver would turn into a 6-3 inning-ending double play, and Connors would face the minimum three batters in the second. Connors would then turn it up a notch in the third as he struck out Jacob Beter, Lucas Basile, and Sean Ryan in order for his second 1-2-3 inning of the night. The two teams would combine for just one hit and three total base runners over the first five and a half innings. Finally, in the bottom of the sixth, Connors would walk pinch hitter Jonathan Rice with one out, and with two outs, Steven Simos would be hit by a pitch, giving Milford their first opportunity with multiple runners on all game long, with one of their best RBI men coming to the plate in Sam Parker. I'll have the call of that one for you. That ball is smoked into right field. Ben Poon on his horse. He's not going to get to it. That ball is going to bounce and roll all the way to the fence. One run is in. Here comes another. Racing the third base is Sam Parker. He's being waved around. Here comes Parker. The throw to the plate. Not in time. A three run inside the park. Home run for Sam Parker. And Milford is up three to nothing. It would be Milford's one and only hit on the night, but it would prove to be the only one they needed. Northboro would make some noise in the seventh, collecting two hits and scoring a run on a wild pitch. But with the tying run at the plate, Nick Kazarian would strike out Nate Anderson to end the ball game. It was an outstanding pitcher's duel on both sides, but Milford would walk away with their 17th victory of the season, defeating Northboro by a final of 3-1. Milford ended up closing down the season with nine consecutive victories, finishing with a record of 19 and three. They ended up tied record-wise with Lemonster at the end of the season, but Milford was able to hold the tiebreakers that allowed Post 59 to claim the Zone 4 regular season title, and they were able to take the number one seed in the Zone 4 playoffs. They were able to receive a bye through the play-in round, and so their playoff road began this past Wednesday, July 18th, a day later than Milford initially intended, but rain forced the games in the playoffs to be postponed by a day, but eventually playoff baseball got underway at Fino Field, and Milford ended up taking on the 
eight seed in the playoff field, and that ended up being Northbridge post 343. Now, Milford has a very tough playoff history against Northbridge. They had lost their last five playoff games against post 343, but on Wednesday night, it was a very different story. Milford was able to come out strong offensively. They were able to grab a run in the bottom of the first inning to take an early lead and then exploded for four runs in the second, helped along by a big three-run bases-clearing triple by Sam Parker, who ended up having three hits and four runs batted in on the night. Milford continued to pad their lead as the game went on, and Jonathan Rice was in lockdown mode on the start on the mound for post-59, and in the end, Milford was able to walk away with an 8-0 victory, so they move on to the winner's portion of their bracket in the first round of the zone playoffs. They will now take on Cherry Valley in a matchup on Friday night, and then they'll look ahead towards the weekend in hopes of finishing off the first part of zone play, and then moving on, hopefully, to the zone four finals. So we will have some of that coverage for you here on Milford TV. We're hopeful to cover that Milford versus Cherry Valley playoff game, and we'll see what other coverage is in store on Milford Milford TV over the course of the weekend. But of course, you can catch up with all of the Milford Legion baseball action live with me over on MyFM 101.3. We broadcast every single game of Milford Legion baseball live over there on MyFM. So we certainly encourage you to tune in and we will continue to keep you updated on the status of Post 59 right here on the Milford Informer. In two weeks, we will be set to bring you a recap of the 2019 state tournament, which again will be held here in Milford at Fino Field. So regardless of how Milford ends up in these zone playoffs, they will have a bid to the the state tournament as the host team, but they certainly hope to earn their way in as the representative from Zone 4. So certainly best of luck to Milford moving forward in the playoffs. And again, we will keep you updated right here on the Milford Informer. But that's going to wrap things up here for this week's show. Again, we will be back with our next summer edition two weeks from now. So we'll certainly look forward to catching up with you then. Until then, from all of us here at Milford TV, this is Tim Coet saying have a great week. So long, everybody.